Chairman, it's Angela Saunders from Democratic Services. We're now live. Thank you, Angela. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's virtual meeting of the East Sub-Area Planning Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may, if they wish, use their videos. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be conducted at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will again adjourn for a short period to try and establish, re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphones. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise accordingly. The vote will be taken by the Democratic officer with a roll call of all members present who will answer for, against or abstain. The result of the vote will then be announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they will be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting, members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should, be in, should indicate by using the raise your hand function, which will be monitored by the Vice Chairman, Councillor Adrian Parsons. Any member not on the committee or are unable to raise your hand function, you who wish to make or ask a question should indicate by typing a chat, an X in the chat box. Um, in the case of Councillor, uh, um, uh, sorry, Councillor Flashman on his telephone, by all means, um, make a note, Jim, verbally of your interest. Uh, before we start today's meeting, I will ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. And if we could also have introductions for the Cornwall Council officers who are also in attendance. Across to you, Rowena. Thank you, Chairman. I will now call your name. Please confirm your name and your electoral division. Councillor Burden. Um, Neil Burden, Stoke Clemsland. Councillor Craker. Councillor Nick Craker, Liscard North. Councillor Eddy. Good morning, Martin Eddy, St. Clair Division. Councillor Flashman. Jim Flashman, Kelly Bray, St. Dominic and uh, St. Melian Division. Councillor Fitter. Good morning, John Fitter, Colin, St. Morgan and Newquay North. Councillor Holly. Derek Holly, Saltash East. Councillor Jordan. Barry Jordan, Tintagio, good morning. Councillor Long. Good morning, Councillor Andrew Long, Kyneton Division. Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Penryn West. Councillor Mould. Good morning, <coughs> Councillor Carol Mould, um, um, St Member and St Andalian, sorry. Councillor Pascoe. Good morning, Councillor Pascoe, Liscard West and Dog Wars. Councillor Pugh. Good morning, I'm Councillor Pugh from the Trelawney Division. Councillor Tamlin. Good morning, Sam Tamlin, Saltash West. Councillor Parsons. Good morning, Adrian Parsons representing the Alton Nun Division. And Councillor Batters. Good morning, Chris Batters representing the Lenivet Plisland Division. We also have Councillors Lennox Boyd and Lebroy in attendance. Mm. And we also have the following officers in attendance Davina Pritchard, Group Leader, Richard White, Senior Development Officer, Vanessa Ormerod, Lawyer. Jason Drew, Environmental Protection Officer. Angela Saunders is the meeting producer for today and myself, Rowena Brebner, Democratic Officer. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Rowena. Um, moving on to item one on the agenda, and that's apologies. Are there any apologies, please? There are no ap apologies, Chairman. Thank you. Item two is declaration of interest. Does anyone have any declaration of interest, please? No, we take the silence as being a 
a no in that case. Um, item three is minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, can I have a proposer and seconder with I'll regards recommend to approval? Beg your pardon? Give me a recommend approval, Chairman. Thank I'll you, Jim. And was that you, Barry? I see you. Right, yeah. Right, so proposed by Councillor Flashman, seconded by Councillor Jordan, that it was a true and accurate record. Can we have a roll call for the confirmation of that, please? Yes, Chairman. Councillor Burden. Approve. Councillor Craker. Councillor Craker. I'll come back to Councillor Craker. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Fitter. Four. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Long. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. Councillor Batters. Four. Councillor Craker, can you indicate how you wish to vote in the minutes, please? <laughs> It wasn't nine in the morning. You could have got it over and done with. Councillor Craker. Well, it's a Chairman, we don't appear to have um, Councillor Craker speaking. Shall we just check to see that he's able to participate? Yes, certainly. Can, if someone can give him a ring just to confirm, and we'll pause for the moment. <coughs> okay. Rowena, do you want me to call him? Yes, please. That would be helpful. I'll try. Councillor Jordan Barry, um, for some reason your light is flashing a Morse code to me. Ah, right. Now it's stopped. Okay. I left my mic on. Sorry, Chairman. That's okay. No problem. Um, hello, it's Angela from Democratic Services. Um, Councillor Craker was having a bit of technical difficulty, but he's going to try and join the meeting again now. Fine. Okay. We'll uh, we'll give it a few moments. <clears throat> This is a period at which um, you almost wish ITV were doing it instead of uh, Microsoft. Then we could just click into an advert for 30 seconds and then come back live. But uh, instead of that, we have to sit in silence. Hello, are you there, Nick, by any chance? Uh, no, he's not yet, Chairman. It's out. I'm keeping an eye on the um, attendance list, but it doesn't look like he's back with us yet. Mr Chairman, can you confirm that if Nick isn't here for any part of the application discussion, then he can't vote? Is that still the case? It, it is a requirement that one's present throughout, uh, Derek. OK, thank you. I just want to yes, we'll have to make a decision in a minute, go without him if necessary. That's the thing. <clears throat> Apologies, of course, to the uh, public speakers who are patiently waiting in the wings, but uh, 
it is a requirement that we try our best to ensure a full committee is in attendance. Uh, Chairman, it's Angela from Democratic Services. I've just tried to call Councillor Craker again, but I can't get through. Fine. So there's no answer. Right. I think in that case we should proceed, should we not? OK, I can confirm that even without Councillor Craker's vote, the minutes has been carried. Fine. Thank you very much, Rowena. In that case, we will have to proceed because obviously if, we're, if we can't contact him as well as not receive him, it makes it very difficult to know what's happening. So, uh, right. In that case, we now go on to item one on the agenda, which is PA 20 stroke 04057, Homely Garden Centre Stratton Bude. And it's being presented by Richard White. So across to you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'll just try to share my screen. Yes, that's a, that's up and working. OK, thank you. Um, so this is uh, application at Homely Garden Centre. The application is for <coughs> the construction of a car wash. Uh, to replace an existing car wash and it's also for the construction of a or siting of a portable building um, uh, ancillary to the car wash itself. Um, just for clarification, um, the reference to existing car wash, the existing car wash doesn't um, on, on site that has previously operated but has since ceased operation um, did not benefit from planning permission. <coughs> So the key issues for the application relate to the principle of a car wash business in this particular location, uh, the noise impact upon neighbours and the wider amenity of the area, uh, the highway impact and any surface water runoff with associated pollution issues. So there's a wider site location plan of the garden centre site um, and you can see obviously the red line plan showing the access. <laughs> from the highway leading to the site to be developed for the car wash itself. A slightly more detailed site plan showing the position of the car wash in the lower service yard area of the, of the garden centre. And again, similar aerial photo showing the, the layout of the, the garden centre itself. This is the uh, site location plan for the application showing the wider um, area um, associated with the garden centre outlined in blue. And this is the more detailed block plan showing the position of the car wash uh, in grey to the lower service yard area with the porter cabin structure to its immediate south, uh, southeast. Sorry. Uh, this is the proposed layout of the car wash. It's a two bay facility within a, a, a proposed uh, building, a uh, block construction. And these are the proposed elevations. So it's solid on three elevations and obviously one open elevation. That's a section through the proposed car wash building. And this is the, the porter cabin to be sited to its side. Some photos of the uh, application site. So this is a photo looking into the service yard at the lower part of the site. Um, you can see where the porter cabin, uh, the um, shipping container is located. That's the area for the proposed development, the proposed car wash building. Uh, this is a view sort of northeast again, looking down into the lower service yard area with the storage of materials associated with the garden centre. <clears throat> this is the um, the view to the um, what was previously operating as car wash on site, the structure that's been retained. Obviously, the car wash uh, operation has now ceased, um, but the structure is obviously retained, but used for storage purposes. In the background of that photo, you can just see the lower storage yard area where the, the proposed car wash is to be located to the left hand side of that slide. And that's a bit of a clearer shot to show the existing canopy and the shipping containers in the background showing the position of the car wash. And that's a recently added um, extension to the garden centre. Uh, and again, you can see the shipping containers to the sort of uh, side of that slide um, where the proposed car wash is to be located. Uh, that's the porter cabin that was associated with the, the car wash that was operating without planning permission. Uh, that's still left in the uh, in the, the main car park area 
Um, in the back of that slide, you can see a neighbouring property uh, named Brooks Oak, which adjoins the, the car park um, and adjoins the lower storage yard area. So the balance of considerations, um, the key issue is that the car wash is considered the car wash is considered an ancillary element to the main garden centre business um, and is considered to accord with policies 2, 5 and 21 of the, the local plan. Um, subject to mitigation, it's not considered to result in unreasonable noise and disturbance, and therefore accords with policies 12, 13 and 16 of the local plan. Access is considered safe and suitable for the proposed ancillary use in accordance with policy 27 and any drainage and pollution mitigation can be controlled by condition, planning condition to make the development acceptable. Therefore, the recommendation is to approve subject to suggested conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, our first public speaker uh, speaking as an objector is Walter Wonicott. Are you there, please, Walter? Good morning. I am here. Thank you very much. Can't Good morning, Walter. Good morning, okay. Yeah, here you find um, you have the usual three minutes uh, to give your uh, details and we will give you a 30 second warning just prior to the end of the three minutes. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. This is a retrospective application. It's the <laughs> wrong development for an isolated location in a designated AGLV and should be refused in principle. First, the applicant's latest noise assessment states it could operate 144 cars per day. That's not a small scale use for a remote countryside area. There's no overriding locational and business needs being this location. It fails policy 5.1c. Second, it's not an extension of the applicant's garden centre business. It's a different use class, it's not an ancillary use and would be operated by an independent third party. It fails policy 5.1d. My focus is on amenity, but it must be noted the site is within around 300 metres of a grade one listed church, yet no heritage impact assessment has been submitted. <coughs> this is a fundamental requirement under policy 24, the MPPF section 16 and section 66 of the Listed Building Act 1990. The application should be refused accordingly. Moving on, the applicant's own noise consultant confirms that without mitigation, the jet wash noise would cause a significant <coughs> adverse impact to the Bickles. We instructed our own noise specialist to identify grave concerns about the submitted report. For example, the WHO standard used is for a steady continuous noise like a road, not an on-off, on-off jet wash use. The application confirms that the site is so close to a dwelling that a complex set of mitigation measures are essential. However, the suggested measures fail the required test under MPPF paragraph 56. First, the design in the noise report says it's not to scale and is for illustrative purposes only. So what exactly is being approved now? Second, the condition requires 1.5 metres space for the vehicle from the opening. However, with this in place, a 4x4 van would hardly fit in the proposed bays. Third, all calculations are based on both vacuums and jet washers operating at a set location, yet this is not marked on any plan for approval. Fourth, the condition does not include any controls on the industrial vacuum siting or use, which must be an error. Fifth, no information has been provided to explain how the jets would be calibrated to reduce noise. Sixth, the applicant has been unable to identify what an acoustic nozzle is or how it works. There will be an obvious temptation for operators to jet wash and vacuum outside the enclosure and to readjust the equipment to maximum pressure. It's wholly unclear how these measures could possibly be enforced, yet they're an essential component of the mitigation. The Bickles don't have to imagine the noise disruption. They lived it when the applicant allowed the jet wash to operate without permission from 2019 to 2020. This harm only ceased when the council enforcement team intervened. 30 seconds it remaining. It was, thank you. It was relatively easy for the council to act then as the applicant was operating without planning permission. If this application is approved, the protections for the Bickles become limited, complex and expensive for the council to implement. The cash generation potential of the car wash is no doubt attractive to the applicant, but this is the wrong location for such development. I invite you to refuse the application and will answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of the speaker for clarification purposes, please? Yeah, I've got a question here, if I may. Um, yeah, certainly. Go ahead, Jim. <clears throat> um, how far away are the pickles, you say, from the actual car wash uh, um, application site? So the pickles live in the house that's closest. Um, well, it's about 30 metres away from the site from the, to the east. So on Richard's plan, on location plan, it's Brooks Oak, the dwelling right next to the, to the um, garden centre. OK, thank you. 
Um, Councillor Harley, Derek, I saw your hand come up that it went off again. Did you wish to speak? No, it's been asked. Thank you. Fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Fitter, John, your hand. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the, to the a question to the speaker, um, am I to understand that the enforce planning service enforcement team actually um, closed this previous operation down because of the grounds that it didn't have planner permission or because of the related noise and the activities and the disturbance to the neighbours or was it a combination of both? Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, it's a combination of both. The there's no the, the, this type of use um, requires planning permission. It's not an ancillary use where you don't have to apply for permission. So it didn't have permission to operate. And secondly, the vicar was living next door, um, experienced a lot of noise disturbance, as the um, noise report indicates that it'd be a significant harm with that mitigation. They had that for a long time. They made a noise nuisance complaint to Cornwall Council, and the response was uh, the submission of various applications. This is the second application submitted for the. Um, for the development. So yeah, it was a combination of both not uh, in breach of planning and also noise nuisance. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, John. Uh, I see no other hands up at the moment. Um, can you confirm that please, Vice Chair? That's correct, Chairman. Thank, thank you. you. If you could drop, thank you, John. I was just going to say, if you could drop your hand, lovely. Um, our second speaker is Councillor Bob Willingham of Bude Stratton Town Council. Are you there, Councillor Bob? Good morning to you. Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr Chairman. You, good morning. You have three minutes. I can hear you nice and clearly. We will give you 30 seconds warning before the end of your three minutes. So when you're ready, away you go, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. This is an application to replace the existing car wash. The BSTC committee find this confusing as the existing car wash was set up and operated without planning permission. Therefore, to refer to it as a replacement is dishonest. It operated without permission from November 2019 until Cornwall Council enforcement told the applicant to cease the application as it had no permission and because there was also a noise nuisance complaint from the neighbours. The applicant was well aware of the noise complaints and if it was possible to reduce the volume, one would have expected him to have implemented the modifications immediately after the first complaint instead of continuing for another five months. A car wash business serving 144 vehicles per day is going to produce a considerable amount of polluted runoff water, which will include detergent, oil, <coughs> grease, brake dust, rubber and general dirt particles, all of which can be toxic to wildlife. The applicant has not demonstrated that they are able to satisfactorily remove the risk of any pollutants from harming the sensitive local environment. The application form refers to a septic tank, which the plans do not show. BSTC do not consider a septic tank an associated soak away to be an acceptable environmental protection. The applicant fails a test under Cornwall Local Plan Policy 5.1c as it is not of a scale appropriate to the location, despite Highway stating that the application is unlikely to result in a significant increase in vehicle movements. I would su suggest 144 cars per day in this location is significant. The increase in traffic volumes would compound the risk at an already junk dangerous junction with the main Holsworthy to Bude Road. Why plan by tragedy? The application also fails to test under policy 5.1c as it does not demonstrate an overriding locational and business need to be in that location, such as a farm diversification. There is no need for the car wash to be in this location. It has no functional connection with the main business, that of the garden centre. The car wash facility would be a new use and not an extension of the existing business, which is evident as the applicant will not directly be involved in the operation of the car wash business as the site will be leased to the operators. The development is very close to a grade one listed church and yet no uh, assessment has been provided to demonstrate what level of harm it may cause to the significance of this heritage asset. The development has not demonstrated to comply with Cornwall Local Plan Policy 24 or NPPF Section 16. Due to these considerations, I ask this committee to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for clarification of the speaker, please? Councillor Burton, Neil Burton. Yes, uh, good morning. Um, you did mention the junction. Um, have you got any record of the number of incidences there at the junction? No, the, the, it's always a very lively, um, dangerous 
um, corner. And um, I'm aware of one fatality um, in that location, but that was a few years ago. But um, my my experience is always a dangerous junction to pull out on. Um, the the speed uh, of the vehicles on the main road actually makes it very difficult. Okay, Neil, we do have my. We do have a highways officer in attendance, I believe, if you wish to ask him later. But uh, good morning to you, Mary. Your question, please. Councillor May. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to ask the councillor um, how many um, objections they had via the, the town council. Just um, roughly. Uh, right, I don't have an answer for that. All the objections are done online with Cornwall Council. Um, uh, I don't have those figures, but they can be found on your portal. Um, Just wondered, Chairman, if, if the council had anyone personally, you know, ring him up. Sorry, did you, could you repeat that, Mary? Sorry. Did, did the councillor have a resident who had actually I, phoned yes. him up or emailed him? Doesn't appear um, as though he did. Well, obviously, the neighbours, um, the neighbours to the site um, objected. To the uh, to the application, um, I I can't tell you any others. I haven't personally had any others. Um, we we use the Cornwall Council portal as our main source of uh, information. It might be one for the um, for the case officer in a moment, Mary. Thank you, Chairman. I can look online. Fine. Um, are there any other questions for clarification purposes, please? None shown, Vice Chair. None shown, Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Willingham, for your Thank attendance. You. Um, our next speaker is Mark Kemp, who is speaking on behalf of the application. Good morning. Are you there, Mark? I am here. Thank you. Good morning. You have three minutes in which to give us your details. and We will give you a 30 second warning prior to the end of the three minutes. So when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's been a car wash uh, running here until 2015 with a jet wash. Uh, it was closed when the then owner, Mr. Brooks, sold the business. That owner, between 2015 and 2018, sold the business to the current applicant, and the car wash business was reopened in 2019. And it was operating from an open sided covering, which allowed for around four cars to pass through. Um, in early January, the 7th of January 2020, the planning officer contacted us to advise that the car wash needed planning permission and it was agreed that we would make a detailed planning application to replace or uh, authorise the existing setup. That detailed application was submitted in February and validated in March, but the application was withdrawn in April because following the first national lockdown in March, more time was required to collect the additional information to respond to some of the early comments that we'd received. The application was then resubmitted in June with an ecology and an acoustic report. Uh, that might go some way to helping the town council see why a retrospective application was not actually submitted. It was on the advice of the planning officer. It's been mentioned that the size of the car park is, um, is to be affected. This is now unaffected as the facility has been repositioned in the proposal drawings. It's also been said that it would damage the intrinsic character of the area. There are four car wash businesses in Bude, which is less than three miles away, and there are two others on the main road. One's a short distance northwest of Homely and another is southeast at Redpost. And this facility at Homely is benefiting from adventitious trade from the garden facility customers. And with other car wash businesses so close by, it's not offering a unique business which will draw people to the area specifically for that. About the soakaway, drainage will not be fed to a soakaway. The floor inside the structure we're proposing falls to the back where wastewater is collected in slot drains. These pass through silt traps to remove dirt and solid particles, then through an oil interceptor before being stored in a purpose-built holding tank, which will be emptied regularly by a licensed tanker. The objection states that the facility in the neighbour is eight metres away and the previous speaker said 30 metres away. It is in fact, now that the facility has been relocated, the Bickles at Brooks Oak are more than 75 metres away, that's 250 feet, and Kitts Bungalow is nearly one and a half rugby pitches away. 30 seconds remaining. And, and both properties are four metres above the new facility. 
The proposal includes a standard porter cabin and a purpose-built two-bay structure for washing cars, and that structure is single-storied and roofed. It's only open along one side, and the walls will be built from solid concrete blocks and lined with acoustic panels on the walls and the ceiling. Thank you. That's that's you finished on the wall, is it? Yes, that's my three minutes. Thank you very much. Well, time by the sounds of it. Um, are there any questions of the speaker for clarification purposes, please? Uh, Mr. Holly, your hand is up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, whereabouts will be the position? I couldn't. I've looked all over the plans and I just can't see it. Some of the writing is so small. Anyway, whereabouts will be the position of the pump compressor building place? Uh, that will be up to the operators of the car wash and in the condition that's been imposed by the um, recommendation. Right, because it would seem obvious to me that whether you could use your imprints on this if, the, if the, this council is mandated to approve, that the position should be to the northwest on the opposite side to books close anyway behind the unit. But uh, that's the first question. Um, the second one was, I couldn't quite work this out from the noise impact assessment, from impact assessment, impact, whatever, acoustics. What's the um, actual effect of these supposedly very good um, noise reducers on the ends of the spray hoses? Spray hose? is, is it significant? I have not got personal uh, experience of the benefit of one or the other. Okay, right. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Might be Thanks. something that um, Jason Drew can uh, give you some help with. Yeah, uh, shortly, Derek, think. if you wish. One of our officers, environmental officer, etc. Um, he could probably Thank give you. some help on that one. But um, Councillor Fitter, John, your Thank question, you. please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wonder if I can ask the speaker um, if he can tell us what the function is of the pond, which is on the block plan, the the and, and the, sort of the size of the pond. And is it in the ownership of the applicant? Yes, the pond is in the ownership of the applicant and it's an existing feature in the site. And, and is it on level wise, is, is it a higher level? Um, I, I can't work it out from the plan. Is it higher than the existing than the proposed site or is it lower? Uh, it's not higher. If it's not at or about the same height as the facility it will be probably a little bit lower. And so what steps have been taken to um, prevent any um, conflict with the discharge of the, um, the washing materials and all the associated sort of paraphernalia that goes with the washing of the cars to allow to make sure that nothing actually doesn't go into the pond? The, uh, the efforts we've used are to create a three sided structure with the floor sloping to the back. So all of the drains will collect the wastewater from inside the cubicles that the cars are being washed in. Uh, all of that drains then to the northwest into um, uh, effectively a holding tank, um, which is uh, which, which doesn't have any outlet from it. It only has an inlet, which is then emptied by the licensed uh, waste remover. Thanks very much. Sealed, it's a sealed chamber. Right. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, John. Um, Derek, your hand is still up. Another question, is it? Or? Jim here. Thank you, sorry. Chairman. Uh, did you not have a question, um, Derek? No, sorry, my mistake, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Jim, go ahead. Councillor uh, Cashman. Thank you very much. Um, the buildings mm -hmm. that uh, are proposed to be uh, used as the uh, um, car wash. Will the cars be washed inside the buildings? That's right, they will. So that would potentially cut any noise. Uh, uh, that's the intention. So we've got uh, oh, there's only one side of the cubicle that's open, and the ceilings and the walls of the cubicle are lined with uh, with acoustic um, panelling. And a secondary question. Um, I understand that the new car washes now did recycle a good percentage of the water through filtration. Is this going to be used on this site? I don't have any uh, knowledge of that, I'm afraid. Sorry, Councillor uh, Flaxman. That's all right, thank you. Okay, Jim, thank you. Um, no other questions on my um, on my screen, Vice Chair, is that correct? No, that's it, Chairman. <clears throat> thank you very much. In that case, 
<clears throat> we'll move on to the local member who is Councillor Dolphin, but I, I understand or I believe there hasn't been any communication from Councillor Dolphin. Uh, just to confirm that, is that correct, Rowena? That's correct, Chairman. Thank you. In that case, we move to the adjoining divisional member, who is Councillor Peter Lebroy. So, Peter, you have five minutes in which to speak to us. Um, I'll be looking for you to wind down at five minutes um, and we will give you a little bit of notice as to the coming close to the five minutes. But when you're ready, away you go. Thank you. OK, so thank you very much indeed, Mr Chairman. Uh, just to confirm, I'm speaking in objection to this application. Um, first of all, it's simply not a suitable location for a car wash. Um, the location is isolated in open countryside that has very poor access onto the main A3072 Butte to Halsworthy Road. Um, it, it, I think it would probably be unlikely to be granted consent for a garden centre if there were not one there already. Um, it's an isolated rural location uh, which has limited sustainable transport options for the employees um, and a lack of comparable pre-existing uses on or near to the site. Um, and I'd also like to bring uh, your attention to uh, historic fatal accidents on this stretch of the road, um, as alluded to by uh, uh, Bude Stratton Town Councillor uh, uh, Mayor Bob Willingham. Um, there's also concerns in my mind about some material objections uh, to our heritage assets here. The Grade 1 listed Church of St Swithin and also the medieval St Swithin's Holy Well appears to be more or less directly below the site, approximately 300 metres away. Um, this nearby Grade 1 church is not even mentioned in the application. This is a fundamental failure. I also note that in the immediate adjoining field to the east is evidence of a rare prehistoric settlement and in the adjoining field to the north is ev evidence of a medieval field system. The application should be refused on the basis that it's not demonstrated what level of harm it would cause to the significance of the listed asset or to the beautiful and tranquil local setting. I think there are also material objections to the local ecology. Um, the site is an attractive countryside location which follows a gradient uh, to a stream down to the north. Approximately 300 metres to the east of the site and connecting to the same stream lies Scorsham and Dub Woods Country Wildlife Site. A car wash business serving perhaps in excess of 144 vehicles a day is going to produce a significant amount of polluted runoff water and I know that we've heard that that will be contained uh, but there's a lot of other uh, concerns in my mind more around the noise um, and just the, the the environmental pollution of the commercial activity going on. Um, the actual detail of how the protection uh, to the environment would be implemented is left to a condition and it's not been demonstrated in my opinion that this these conditions uh, are actually capable of being enforced. So to summarise this part it's the wrong type of development for the isolated rural countryside. It's not an extension of the applicant's business, unlike the application that was recently approved for the warehouse space. It's a different use class, not an ancillary use, and will be operated by an independent party. It, it doesn't comply with Cornwall Council, or sorry, Cornwall Local Plan Policy 5. Um, in conclusion, the applicant's own submissions confirm that without significant and complicated mitigation, the noise and water pollution levels would be entirely unacceptable to the environment and to the immediate residential neighbour. The proposed mitigation is complex and vague and should not be left to a planning commission. It's difficult to envisage how that mitigation could be enforceable and previous experience of the unlawful use of the site indicates that the neighbours, the Bickles, are right to be very concerned about this. The development has not been demonstrated to comply with Cornwall Local Plan Policy 12. Uh, the development is also very close to the Grade 1 listed church, which I mentioned. No assessment has been provided to demonstrate what level of harm it may cause to the significance of this heritage asset and also the tranquility and beauty of the immediately local environment. Uh, the development has not been demonstrated to comply with Cornwall Local Plan Policy 24 or the NPPF Section 16. Uh, and with that, Chairman, I thank you. Chairman, you're on mute. Thank your pardon. It's unusual for me. Um, yes, thank you, Peter. Um, it, I'm just going to ask about the reference to a serious road accident in that area. Um, no reference has been made as to when that may have been. 
um, because our highways yeah. officer doesn't show any concerns with regards to road safety. Um, so Councillor Willingham referred to it and you've added his comments again to it. Are you able to clarify when that may have been? Uh, Chairman, I can't remember the date. It's about it's between 10 and 15 years ago. There's, there's a tragic instance of a, a couple of young lads going to work in their works van. And you will know because you um, you were active in this area, I think, in your previous career. Uh, it's located on a very long but fast corner, which effectively is blind. Um, so I think the, the young lads were going around that corner that surrounds effectively goes around the, um, uh, the site, the application site, um, and somehow met with an accident causing their car to crash and they, they were both killed in that incident. Um, the okay, the yeah, junction. It's, it's okay, the it, was just, it was just really trying to find out roughly when that may have been, because obviously that has been mentioned twice. So uh, very tragic circumstances, but that, I think you clarified the situation there. So thank you very much. Um, are there any questions anyone wishes to ask of the divisional member? <coughs> um, Councillor Holly. Yeah, just to inform you about the accident, I've just checked that on crash map and it shows that at the junction of the Homely Garden Centre, there was an accident on the 26th of April 2019, classified as serious involving two cars. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. All right. Um, Councillor Parsons, you had your hand up. Yeah, no, it's OK, Chairman. Fine. It was in error. If there are no other questions of of the uh, speaker, of Councillor Roy, in that case, we will now move on to questions of the case officer. And do bear in mind, we have the environmental officer here, Jason Drew, and I would presume we have, I truly myself didn't catch who was the highways officer here today, but hopefully we have highways here for any questions that may come to them. Um, so we'll open up Councillor Parsons. Clarification. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Hello, Richard. Morning, Council Parsons. Richard, could you just confirm that the access to the pressure washer site is the same access as what is currently used for the existing um, existing um, business that's there? Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's um, it is exactly the same. So it's off of the the, the main road um, through a, a smaller um, road and then into the garden centre site. So the car wash will access through the existing car park um, and then into the service yard at the lower part of the site. Right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Eddie Martin. Morning, Richard. Good morning, um, Richard. We've we've heard from several of the speakers about a heritage impact assessment and its impact or possible potential impact on on St. Swithin's Church. Um, have you considered this matter? Um, I think it wasn't considered because given the scale of the development um, and the setting within the the well established um, sort of garden centre site, um, and you know looking particularly at the building itself and the scale of that that the, um, there is, um, as you'll see, if I just scroll down from <clears throat> you can see the screen at the back of the site, um, the, the established planting around the boundary at which the development will sit, mm -hmm. um, which obviously limits any sort of physical um, interaction between that and the heritage assets. So I don't think there's really a setting issue um, that, that that would um, you know certainly come into play here um, and and not not harmful uh, to any degree um, in terms of the planning assessment. So that that's um, that that covers off the the kind of physical line of sight between the two. Yeah, uh, that in the church. Uh, but, but I was wondering about the noise impact. Uh, well, obviously, the, the development itself is designed to focus, the, well, the openings of the development focus sort of into the site towards the existing um, uh, buildings, the main range of buildings that serve the garden centre. Um, so, and, so and, and obviously the cars are to be washed within that enclosure and obviously the noise assessment um, has, has been undertaken to, um, to, to sort of cover that issue off. So I think um, if you're looking at that setting within the wider garden centre and, and potential other activities that could go on in that storage yard area, you know, movement of forklift trucks, for example, or delivery vehicles entering that. Um, I, I don't think, again, you know, that the, the noise impact would be a, a, a harmful issue in, in that particular context. Mm. OK, thanks, Richard. Thank you, Chairman. 
Councillor Holly, Holly, Derek. Thank you, Mr Chairman. A uh, couple of quick ones. First of all, um, can you confirm or otherwise that this operation does not require a use class change? That's the first one. Uh, the use class, I believe, is sui generis, so it does it does require consent. Yes, so it it, it must have a planning application to be you know to be assessed in this context. And that will, that will in effect be a use class change, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Use, first yeah. one. The second one was um, if the if this car wash has been in operation on this site since before 2014, we don't know quite how long. Um, what record of complaints has Cornwall Council Environmental had about it? Uh, they might be best placed to to advise you on that if they have any records. Oh. Um, I suppose most recently the photo that I showed you of the. I just scrolled to that. This was the operation that that, that most recently brought this to our attention. Um, it was investigated by our enforcement team and um, obviously, the operation ceased following that. The structure is still there, but obviously, as you can see, the car wash operation ceased. So that was the first involvement, um, and I believe that the public protection team were involved as well. OK, I'll ask. thanks for that. The last one may also be them, which is that um, this is only in my experience. And you may be able to comment on it. Um, when you have an enclosed space and it looks quite tight per car and you're using these car wash um, jet sprays, they've in effect produced an awful lot of microparticles of water and dirt in the area. Have health and safety looked at this in terms of um, the, the health of the uh, person using the spray? Uh, not that I'm aware of, Councillor Holly. Um, I presume, like with many things in planning, that there is other legislation that would regulate in terms of health and safety of operatives that would probably you know, outweigh any sort of planning um, sort of consideration in that aspect. So, um, but again, that they may be best place to, to, to advise on that, but certainly not from a planning point of view. Thank you. And the last one is the comment I made about the position of the um, compressor unit. And there are details in the planning application of how it's going to be constructed uh, in terms of reducing noise. But do you take my point that we've best cited on the far side of the um, proposed car wash unit <coughs> on the west side? Yeah, I mean, that, that would obviously be the natural position wouldn't it, behind the whole structure itself to be the, the furthest point away from any neighbouring um, right. properties. Um, obviously, we've got the management plan conditions, so I don't know whether, you know, obviously that to a certain degree could pick up aspects of that as well. Well, I, I, if we are minded to approve this, I'd rather like to, that to be put in because that would give an additional level of protection for the owners of the nearby house. Thank you. Thank you for your help on this question. Thank you, Derek. Uh, Councillor Fitter, John Fitter. Then after Thanks. John, we have Carol, Carol Mould and Neil Burden. John. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, did, did you say we have the highways officer with you, sir, uh, on this call today? Uh, I, I don't believe we do, actually. I know we've got the oh. um, public protection officer. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure about the highways officer. Well, uh, well, um, uh, the reason I, I'm not quite sure if Richard can answer this question, um, uh, it's going back to the highways, and but it's the assessment, the link trip, trip movements, uh, and the, you know, um, the officer, um, Richard, uh, and the highways people are are sort of adamant that that you know this will not create wholly new trips that this um, car wash will be used in conjunction with people visiting and trade in the garden centre. Now, uh, given that, you know, the car wash is, is a distinctly different activity to garden centres, I'm just wondering um, what was the evidence that made them decide that, you know, that this would be a linked trip? venue that people go into the centre would use because um, they're talking about 144 cars a day possibly and I, I cannot believe myself unless he can persuade me otherwise that all these cars and the vast majority of them according to what they're saying will be linked trips they will people that will have gone to the garden centre anyway so I just wonder you know ha, has there been have we evidence for this um, I, I suppose, um, firstly, that yeah, we've, we've obviously consulted the highways officer and that's the conclusion they've reached based on, I think, looking at firstly the scale of development, a two bay car wash, you know, within an established site. So um, 
it, it's making that judgment call whether the scale of a two bay car wash is you know is is, is a uh, intensive operation um the, the high resource has obviously reached the conclusion that there will be a, a, a large element of linked trips um i know that many garden centers operate and quite often they'll have um, other smaller operations from the same sites. I don't think that's uncommon um, and people will um, obviously undertake those link trips to 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 visit that site and use um, potentially other facilities whether that be a, a pet shop or, or, or whatever might else exist at that at that garden centre facility. So but, but the, obviously the high resource has assessed it on that basis. They've reached that conclusion and obviously the as a consultee, you know, we've, we've gone to them for that specialist advice on the on the highway impact and they're satisfied that that, you know, it, it wouldn't be um, um, it wouldn't introduce a significant increase that would compromise highway safety in that case. Yeah, um, I, if I can just come back to make an observation. So I, I, I'm I just, you know, I find it difficult to accept it just like that, that, you know, that uh, because people don't necessarily, in actual fact, go to the garden centre and then say, oh, we'll have a car hand wash now, because the, the, you read the report and it almost implies that it is a multi-purpose um, trip, that you're going to go to the car wash, to the centre, and then you're going to have your car washed. And I, I have to say that I think possibly they will promote the car wash um, extra to, to the garden centre, and so people Anyway, I'll leave it there, but I, I, I think it's a bit of an assessment that's not borne out by evidence in the report. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. That's okay, John. I'm, so, I'm sorry the uh, highways officer is not in attendance, actually. I thought they, I thought they probably would have been, but um, Councillor Mould, Carol, across to thank you. Thank you, uh, <coughs> thank you, Chairman. I was just, I was just wanting to know um, around any management plan going forward, whether there are any um, considerate, sorry, considerations about the restriction in hours of use. Presumably, it will only be when the garden centre is open. Uh, hi, Councillor Mould. Yes, um, yeah, the, the management plan condition, I think it's one of the, the, the final points within there, um, does actually request clarification on um, hours of operation. Uh, so that is included within the management plan condition. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Councillor Burden, Neil. Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm concerned about the junction. Uh, and I'm disappointed. I think the highways officer should be there. I, I travelled on that road an amazing number of times when we had meetings in Bude and when I chaired the Bude Canal. And I just think that um, uh, I've seen several accidents there, quite nasty. And uh, even on the 30th of December 2020, because we attended a wedding in Bude, um, a very low key affair, my dad. But uh, it, it was uh, about 11 o'clock in the morning and um, there was uh, bits of debris everywhere in the car. Well, I saw one car which was badly damaged. And, and I think it is very easy to speed down that slope, really, on that long bend. And, uh, and most likely people are a bit hesitant coming out. And I just wonder if something could be done. Saying that isn't going to make much difference. That, that, it annoys me with these highways officers. They say oh, that won't make much difference, but it's a drip drip thing. You know, they've already had an expansion. This is a, a very go ahead business and company, as you know from Lanson Homely Nursery Garden Centre. In there, they have all sorts of doing shops. Neil, can we come to a question in a moment, please? And my, my, well, clarification. I, want know, I want to know why there's no highways officer and I want you to realise that this there is frequent accidents there. That's why I asked the question yeah. before, because I've seen them and I just think that something right. should be no, done. I think we got to, Neil, I, I don't wish to be nasty, no, but, but I think we have to leave it there. I, I've got your question uh, with yes. regards to the highways officer. Um, exactly. Carol, your hand is still up, I, unless you've got another question in a I'm, moment. No, I'm sorry, Mr Chairman. I'll take it then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, we come now to Councillor Parsons, Adrian. Thanks, Chair. Richard, just with regards to some of the other comments, this garden centre I haven't visited for a long time, but is it specifically a garden centre now or have they developed it further? Is there a shop or a restaurant or cafeteria here? Because quite often for these businesses, to survive in the current climate, they usually try to add 
other strings to the bow and you know try to create a different kind of shopping experience to pull customers in uh, it's just to gauge where we're leading here but but do they provide other goods or services besides plants um thank you councillor parsons um yeah it's a little while since i last went into the building itself but um as i recall as you enter the building on the left hand side there was some um additional sort of retail provision I, I i do recall a pet shop but um again it was a little while ago since i went in there they do also have a, a fairly long established cafe facility um at, at, at the site which um uh, extends to the other side of the building so um there is some development beyond potentially what is you know purely just a, a garden center provision um and as you might be aware from the other homely site you know they, they do sort of have a range of facilities at that, that facility so well thank you yeah that answers the question because you know, they just try to marry things in together just to make the business model work which is obviously what they're trying to do here thank you thank you um councillor holly derek you have your hand up thank you um richard you referred to the management plan conditions i've looked again i can't find these management plan conditions where are they uh, so it should Call three. Bear with me a second, Councillor Holly. And they're still under a different name, and I can't find them. So, condition three. Yeah. Uh, uh, a pre pre management condition. Um, Which looks to uh, yeah looks to, to for a management plan um, yeah. to be read first, and that oh, so was so you're not expecting any details under that. I was looking for the details of it, but that will be put in after, subject to our comments, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, you could. I mean, obviously, if you feel that that condition doesn't quite cover off um, a, a specific element, we've obviously worked through those issues to, to cover off the noise impact. Um, obviously, we could look at that and whether that needs updating to to include uh, an additional element thank you that's fine thank you thank you derek um are there any other questions for jim clarification there. jim yeah. yes go ahead jim yeah. um richard um when the applicant uh, put in the uh, application did they put any details on the type of equipment that is actually going into the building or is that just uh, um, one of those things that they haven't got to. Uh, morning, Councillor Flashman. Um, no, not at this stage. There is some recommendation within the noise impact assessment, and hence um, that this is what our public protection team have reviewed. Um, they obviously, at their request, we've they've suggested a, a planning condition to secure the specific details of that equipment. Um, obviously, the the building itself is designed to the acoustic specification born from the, the noise impact assessment that there was uh, or noise survey that was um, submitted um, but obviously details of the, the, the equipment or kit to be used is, is yet to be sort of finalized hence we've got the we've got that covered off with the condition three the suggested condition three management plan yeah. and um, um, the, the numbers are just um, picked out of this air I would imagine um, we have a local um, car wash at Kelly Bray and I think they're very hard pressed to get 15 to 20 there a day with two operatives. So uh, there's no proven case that they're going to operate with that number of vehicles going in and out. I can understand why they've um, put such a high limit on it. I guess it's just the uh, yeah they, they've modelled it on a, a a number that they've they've reached a conclusion to yeah uh, again a, a two bay car wash uh, in that particular location. Um, probably what I would add is that. Obviously, uh, as I think uh, another speaker's pointed out, there are alternative provisions within Bude itself. Now, whether you're actually going to draw people from Bude to this site to use a car okay. wash alone, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you, Jim. Um, I'd like to ask a question of, um, of of Jason, if I may, Jason Drew. <clears throat> Reference was made earlier, Jason. I, I take you there, yes? Yes, I am, yeah, Councillor Back thank is you. on here. Um, Reference was made earlier about the actual spray units and some reference, excuse my ignorance on how they work, but some reference is made about 
a sort of silencer on the end of these units. Could you perhaps give us a bit more detail as to how how loud they may be or how silent they may be or what such a, a, a statement would mean, please? I think you're referring, Chair, to the acoustic nozzles, which I think. Um, yes, yes, that's right. Um, I've got no experience with acoustic nozzles in, in jet washers, so I mean, uh, I, I would be struggling to, to give you any um, real life examples of, of my experience of them. It was it was something that was put forward by the applicant's acoustic consultant um, who said in their report that they had used them successfully at other sites. Um, the, the difficulty I would have was giving you any um, reassurances on that, having not come across them myself. However, if, if you were minded to grant it, that could be something that could be addressed by way of a management plan to have them installed and, and maintained thereafter. Fine, thank you very much. Um, there are no other hands up for questions of clarification of our officers. Uh, can you just confirm that, Vice Chair? <clears throat> That's correct, Chairman. Fine, in that case, we will go into open debate on this subject. Um, me, I would I'd like, like to, to I would like to contribute something initially on this. Um, my experience of this sort of unit is based purely on the fact I live only about 150 yards away from one of these units, which are two identical closed units to what we're considering here today. Um, never even heard them ever, um, but at the same time, they do share a site with b and and farm foods but they are also the two units are within 20 paces of a very famous cornish pasty shop which has a roaring trade and to my knowledge there has never been any complaints or objections to this unit operating there so that's my only knowledge personal knowledge of these units which is based on living next door or not virtually next door but in close proximity and basically seeing it every day in operation so that's that's my opinion on it uh i've seen nothing that would concern me if i was to buy a shop in that particular uh retail area i wouldn't have any reason to to oppose that uh, unit being there but we have hey, councillor jordan first followed hey, by councillor flashman Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this site very well, having been there hundreds of times in the last 20 years when it was back at Brooks. We were in there when the um, thing was operating illegally. I didn't know it at the time it was illegal, but you could hardly hear it. Um, I've used the one in Lanson many, many times, gone in there with my wife to do um, garden centre and just dropped the car off uh, and no problems at all. I, I cannot understand all the who have about this. So I would like to move approval in line with recommendation. Well, proposed by yourself, Barry. Yep. Fine. Um, I think Jim was the next one up to yeah, speak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in my division at Kelly Bray, uh, the uh, car wash has been operation in for roughly a year, maybe slightly longer. Um, it employs three or four youngsters <coughs> on a regular basis, which probably they're in between um, college and one thing or another. <laughs> They've actually provided a lot of employment. Uh, right opposite is a the large blocks of flats that are just across the road. Um, I've been there myself and parked. You can't hear. Uh, they wash the cars outside of the building before they ballot them inside. Um, you don't really notice any noise. You obviously are aware they're washing the vehicles. Um, I'd like to hear a bit more information about the kit they're putting in because I think they could recycle a terrific lot of the water and that would cut down on the um, uh, removal of any um, potential hazardous uh, um, uh, waste from the site. Um, I, I honestly believe if they're going to wash I can't believe they're going to wash them in the building. I would imagine they'd have a standing pad to wash them and then they'd finish them off in the building. But they, uh, 
I think that the number of vehicles is astronomically too high that they would be do it in a day. I took a vehicle over for someone to have be valeted and clean because it had a a slurry um, discharge over the top of the car. It took them five hours to do one vehicle. So, <laughs> um, I know that was an exception, but people do go to these. Um, um, uh, you take um, car keel, for instance. If there was a car washed in, or I don't know if there is or isn't, but a lot of people would use something, go in for a meal or walk around the garden centre. If it was just a quick wash and a and a, um, a polish, people would do that probably an hour, half an hour to do that, and give them a chance to walk around. They come out jumping in their nice clean car and away. Um, I'd like to second the application. I think that um, it could be conditioned that it wouldn't be running Sundays. And that would appease the church's use. Um, and, and I don't think they ought to go on late at night. I think that there are some <clears throat> interference with electrical that could be television set interference. I don't know, but I think it would be sensible to use on normal work and hour conditions. If they could condition that, I'd certainly second that. Fine. So we, we have a proposal in a second, but we have, we have other speakers still to come up. So next one up is Councillor Holly, Derek. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've looked at some all angles and I've no doubt there will be some impact on the owners of the house adjacent. Um, but I don't think it will be significant. And I think the applicants have gone to quite considerable lengths to make this as quiet as possible. But I don't suppose you're able to stop all the noise. But we have to bear in mind that it is A, a commercial site and B, there is all the car parking going on with slamming of doors anyway. So. That has to be taken into account. I just want to firm up the conditions, Mr. Chairman. I'd like the position of the jet wash compressor to be to the northwest behind the existing, the proposed structures. Um, you know, roughly again against the wall or somewhere up there. Can that be conditioned like that? First of all, Richard. Um, well, can, can we come back to that in a moment, Derek? I'll come back to you on that one if you like. In that case, the second one is the hours yeah. of work to be the hours of work of the. Uh, garden centre. Right. Um, if we could just go through the speakers, Derek, and make sure okay. I don't forget you in a moment. Uh, Councillor Pascoe, Jane, good morning to you. Yeah, yes, good. thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, actually, Jim beat me to it. I'd second Councillor Jordan. Um, I will be supporting this. I think the officers have taken into consideration um, the mitigating details in the management plan. I do, I do hear the concerns about the um, traffic, but I really do think it will be linked journeys. Um, I don't agree with Councillor Flashman uh, about not allowing them to operate some Sundays. I think people do go out on Sundays to do that sort of business. Um, so please don't do that because it does create more employment and that's what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. And of course, I cannot imagine anyone in this country not wishing to go out on a Sunday when the lockdown ends one day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, Councillor Burton, Neil. Yes. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in the car wash at all. My concern is this junction. I just wonder if we went back to the applicant to ask if there's some way they can actually uh, improve it because um, there's quite a wide verge the other side of the road and I just wonder if something could be done there because I do think for the safety of their own customers but there's been too many accidents or, or just um, prangs there and I just think that uh, you know, and that, that's what disappoints me. You know, highways can say, oh, well, you know, it won't be. They're assuming too many things rather than saying this is a chance to make this junction a bit safer. They didn't do it when the big shed was built. This is a, a growing business. Uh, they're entrepreneurs. And I think uh, to keep their customers safe would be in their interest as well. And I just think that uh, we should do something about that. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, uh, that's my concern. Yes, thank you, I think we have to base it obviously on what's in front of us. And of course, the highways officer unfortunately isn't here to to um, defend his decision, but uh, uh, it is there for us to read. So yeah, but I, I think, you know, <clears throat> if you read what he says, unlikely that a reason for refusal of highway safety and capacity grounds could be sustained at appeal. You know, it's almost saying, oh, well, you know, we, we, we can't be bothered to do anything. 
uh, and we may lose that appeal. Well, if you lose that appeal, you lose that appeal. You know, I mean, let's get real. We want to make it safer. This is an opportunity to do. <laughs> okay. Thank you, um, Jane. Did you? Uh, um, right. It appears you've had your hand up by mistake. Sorry. Are there any other? Oh, Councillor Fitter, John. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, 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 I would like to go. Uh, the co it, it, I have no objection to the principle of the business itself, but I do have a objection to the ANAS assessment that has been carried out. And while we cannot argue, obviously, with the highways officer, I certainly as an individual and a councillor would not be able to agree with his assessment until such times as I've seen the evidence because it is these linked journeys and the dangerous that Bood Town Council, Bood Stratton Council rather, ha has made it clear that they consider the junction of the A3072, um, it's a dangerous nature and this will increase the level of business because it, it, it very well must do. And I don't accept for a minute that, you know, that it will be very limited link trips. I believe that people will probably go out to say, yeah, let's go out to get the car washed. I I, I don't think they, they will have to promote this business externally to get the volume of trade they will require to make the business viable. And so we go back to the fact that have an, has a correct assessment been done on this junction? And, um, you know, I, I just, I think there's so many questions still to be asked about this application that I believe it's premature and I believe, you know, it's not been fully researched. And I will have difficulty, quite frankly, at this moment, unless I'm persuaded otherwise, in supporting it as set out. But I'll, um, I'll wait until you've concluded your um, committee meeting, sir. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I cannot see any other hands up um, with regards to questions. Is that correct? Uh, Councillor, no, sorry, Councillor Craker. Um, thank thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think you were missing from this and unable to. Yes, that's right. I just wanted to say I, I've, I've been back for some time now, but I missed about 15 minutes at the start. So I'm going to uh, be abstaining on the vote for that reason. Yes, certainly. Thank you very much. I'm sorry you were absent. Technical problems, obviously. But thank, you, right. thank you for telling us. Um, Right, I see no other hands up, Councillor Parsons. Is that correct, please? That is correct, Chairman. Thank you. Um, in that case, uh, we, can I Chairman, go on? Councillor Burden has raised his hand yes. again. Yes, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the light of what the Town Council have said, and that, is there a way of getting the highway report before we come to a final conclusion? I mean, I just think that. Yes, I think, uh, um, with all due respect, Neil, I, I think the highways officer should have been here today, but his report is in front of you. No, and I think you've been around long enough to know that you've never known a highways officer change his report verbally <laughs> from what's in <laughs> front of you. OK, that, so that I is, think you have that, to accept I, that. I, that is my big disappointment with our highways officers at the moment, as you know, because we yeah, had. But I think I think we've got to respect the fact that he has been asked to put a report in. He has submitted a report. Um, I will mention briefly to Davina in a moment that I think he should have been here um, under the circumstances. But the fact is he's not. And we do have a report as we have reports in other areas of this application. But yes. uh, Councillor Parsons. Say, the, oh. the crash on the 30th of December, which um, you know, I came along soon after. Um, yeah, there was uh, debris with all, all due respect, with all due respect uh, Neil, we don't want to talk about the carnage of road accidents because I've been there, done it, seen it and everything. And it's it's happened. I appreciate you came across an accident, but we don't need to know the nitty gritties of it all, really. It's not part of this planning application. OK, so Councillor Parsons. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to say there are reasons why if people were minded, if they so wish to refuse this application, but for those of us who have been on this committee for long enough, no, I don't think highways are a reason in this case for the simple reason we don't have an objection from the highways officer. Um, so where anybody thinks they're going to go with it on highways grounds, I'm unsure. Thank you. Um, now, coming across, coming back to Richard and Davina perhaps as well, because I think Davina, perhaps the highways officer in hindsight, 
could have been in attendance today. I'm not saying it would have made any difference whatsoever to his report, but at least as you heard, there were quite a few questions. But um, Richard, you heard some points made by Councillor Holly. Um, would you like to come back in on those, Derek? And then we can bring in the proposer and seconder for their opinions. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I just don't want these three points, which I think are quite important to be missed out. Um, certainly the first one, the position of the, the, the jet wash compressor, because if, you, if ever you've been to one of these sites and had used them, you know that most of the noise comes from the compressor unit itself and not from the actual jet hitting the, the jet of water hitting the car. So I think that's pretty critical. I'd like that as far away as possible from the um, Brooks Hill, Brook, Brooks, uh, whatever the house is called anyway. Um, in other words, on the northwest side of the building. Um, I like the hours of work to be defined as those of the garden centre and I'd like the condition about the acoustic nozzles being there and being maintained or checked or whatever as Richard said those three things that was the position right. of the compressor, hours of work and condition of, of the, for the nozzles. Thank you. Okay if we come across though, then to Richard and Davina and then we'll bring Jim and Barry Jordan in in a moment to um, as the proposers as to whether they are agreeable or not. Across to you, Richard or Davina, whoever. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brassus. Um, yeah, I think with the first point, um, we could potentially work that into the management plan condition, if you're happy with that, um, that the siting of equipment, uh, <coughs> including the uh, compressor, thank you. Uh, would be part of that management plan. Um, and obviously make a note that ideally to, you know, to the northwest side, as you said, the furthest point away from Brooks Oak, which is the adjoining dwelling. Um, the, the hours of work, um, I'm, I'm not, too sure whether there's really any restriction on on hours for the, the garden centre. It's one of those sites that's evolved over time. Um, I'm not too sure whether there is a planning condition that restricts the hours. So if you want to be precise with this one, um, obviously we have got the hours of, of operation included in the management plan condition. Um, I don't know whether the, the garden centre is restricted in any way. So if we say to be the same, then that could infer that it could operate at any particular time. So I think if we're looking to be more precise than that, we would need to be looking at that. Mr. I, what I want to do is to make sure that the owners of Brooks, <coughs> whatever it is, um, are not, uh, don't have this noise in the uh, evenings when they may be sitting outside in the summers in, their garden, in the garden, etc. I think that's a reasonable condition to put on. So how can we put that in? So we could just include a standard hours of operation um, to be included within that management plan. And I think that's kind of what we've referred to in the first point of that management plan. So it might be, you know, eight, eight till six or something like that. I don't know what you feel is, yeah, potentially reasonable. That would be good. Yeah. That would be good if the proposal and seconder would agree. And don't forget the condition regarding acoustic nozzles, which has been made a big deal of in the impact report. Thank you. Okay, uh, coming back then to Councillor Jordan and Councillor Flashman. Barry yeah. and Jim, are you in agreement yeah. with those conditions being attached? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've just checked, Mr Chairman. The hours of opening um, in Bude are 8 to 5 Monday to Saturday and 10 to 4 on a Sunday. So uh, not excessive hours. And I can agree that they, they should be um, not operate outside those hours with the, with the car wash. And I yes, can certainly I agree. agree with the siting of the... Um, compressor so it makes less noise for uh, anybody right, right. around so yeah I'm quite happy with that. Thank you Barry, thank you for looking it up. Um, Derek you're happy with those hours obviously. Thank mm. you and the acoustic. And well. Richard I take it that's okay with yourself? Yeah that's absolutely fine again we'll cover that off in the management plan but we can um, that management plan should refer to those hours 8 to 5 and 10 to 4 on a Sunday um, yeah as, as part of that agreed management plan. Fine lovely thank you. Right in that case we will go to the vote. Uh, there's a proposal by Councillor Jordan, seconded by Councillor Flashman, to um, go with the recommendation of our officers with the additional conditions added that you have just heard. So I'll pass it across to Rowena now to go through the vote. Thank you, Chairman. When I call your name, please indicate if you wish to vote for, against or abstain. Councillor Burden. Abstain. Abstain. Um, Councillor Craker. Abstain. Councillor Eddy. Four. Councillor Flashman. Four. Councillor Fitter. Abstain. Councillor Holly. Four. Councillor Jordan. Four. Councillor Long. Four. Councillor May. 
Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Four. Councillor Pugh. Four. Councillor Tamlin. Four. Councillor Parsons. Four. Councillor Batters. Four. The application has been approved by 12 votes, um, four none against and three abstentions, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, that brings us to the end of our shortened agenda today. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. And um, if you can just hold on until such times as we're advised, we are off air. So thank you very much and have a good week. Thank you.